Good morning. Welcome. Hey, where did the Hebrews assemble when they were led out to captivity in Babylon? We're looking today at Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 15 to 17 for our reading. Here's what we have. Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Thus says the Lord, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears for your work shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the enemy. There is hope in your future, says the Lord, that your children shall come back to their own border. So we asked, where did the Hebrews assemble for their journey into captivity? Here, I'll show you a little map here of present-day Jerusalem and Israel. If you go north there to about the center of the screen, you'll see a place called Ramallah. We think that is probably Ramah, based on some different things the scholars have looked at. They gathered them all up there to as kind of an assembly point, probably about there in Ramah, near modern-day Ramallah. And then, of course, they had to go by foot all the way back through the first Fertile Crescent to Babylon. It would be a pretty depressing scene, wouldn't it, for you if you were leaving behind all the things you've ever known, all the things you've built, all of your stuff, your family is getting scattered, everything is scattered, the kingdom is in ruins, and you're being led away to captivity in Babylon. Uh, you could see that would be a, a highly depressing time. Now, we also know that Rachel's tomb, if you go way back there in the Bible, you'll find that Rachel's tomb is in this place. And so we have this interesting picture of Rachel weeping for her children. We have this picture of them as they are being gathered to be hauled away into captivity. Many of them are going to die. Most of them will die in Babylon. Now, later, Matthew Levi, when he writes the Gospel of Matthew, and, you know, Herod wants to kill the, all the children two years old and younger because he's found out that the baby Jesus has been born and he wants to eliminate that potential challenge to his throne. And so what does he do? He goes out to the city there where it would be, and he, his troops go and they slaughter all the innocents. And so Matthew re reapplies this prophecy also, again, to this situation of Rachel weeping for her children because they've all been murdered. They've all been slain by the soldiers. So we have this tragic picture of people being killed, murdered, led to captivity, and Rachel weeping in both cases. But now what about the return from captivity? Because these are all through here. We're seeing several pictures as we go through this area. We're going to see several pictures of God giving encouragement. He wants his people to be joyful. He wants them to be happy and hopeful as they, yes, go and live their lives mostly in captivity. But there will be a coming back. But what does it take? It takes some repentance. And everybody who receives the gift of Jesus will be able to return from captivity, even though they go away into captivity. And we live our lives, we're just in this mad dash through our lives. We're so busy getting one thing done, going to the next. And a lot of, meanwhile, a lot of crazy things are being done. Term, everything's getting termited and many changes are happening all, all around us. But what we want to do is remember that if we're true to Jesus, Jesus will be true to us. And when we stop this race through our own daily captivity, captivity to the world in many cases, and we look up to Jesus and we look for the things of God, when, we, when we, our life begins to be filled with these things, we will repent and we will be released from this captivity. God will help us and guide us. And we'll be having a, a joyful time following Jesus in spite of these strange things happening all around about us. And so what it says in verse 17 is true. There is hope for your future, hope for the people going into captivity in Babylon, and there's hope for us today as so much of the things around us is not morally where it should be. And let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want this day, like all days, but we want this day, the brand new day in front of us, to be a day we live in tune, in harmony with you. Bless us, Lord. Be our guide today. Make our appointments for us. Help us to speak a word that will encourage another. Help us to receive the encouragement you have for us today. May we put your kingdom first and everything else will be added to us. We know that's true, Lord, and we thank you for it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So they assembled about where we think Ramallah is today, but they went into captivity with God's promise of restoration echoing in their ears, at least if they were listening to God's prophet Jeremiah. God be with you today.